Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Today we're gonna to take a close up look at a brand new product that's just announced by Bluetti. This is their new AC60 portable power station. Now the AC60 won't be available for order until a little bit later in April, but Bluetti does have an AC60 information page up on their website and you can sign up for early bird pricing or you can just go and check out uh, the page for more information if you want to and the links of course will be in the description below as usual. Now I've been lucky enough to have this particular AC60 to play around with for the past few weeks and I am genuinely excited about what Bluetti has done with the design of this product. There's some very cool standout functions that I think you're gonna be interested in. But before we get into the specs and the performance testing and all that stuff, let's jump back in time and see what comes in the box. One user manual and one warranty card saying that it's got a two-year warranty with a one-year warranty on the cables. Let's see what cables we got. All right, so we've got a standard car charger to a uh, DC7909 connector, eight millimeter connector. And then we have got MC4s to DC7909. And then we have got a standard uh, kind of computer cable, which tells me there's no charge brick on this. And that's cool. Take a look at the actual power station. Wow, so first impressions. I don't know, you really can't convey this in a video, but I can just tell by feeling the ABS plastic, this feels so much more rugged than even like the EB3A or the uh, EB55, for example. Um, they, I think they've really upgraded their materials. This thing feels significantly higher quality or premium material quality. So, looks like there is a, a wireless charging pad on top. Um, I really like this recessed handle uh, that lays flat. And by the way, the handle doesn't feel cheap. This handle feels beefy. Um, let's see what's on the front here. Got a couple of AC ports. And then everything is covered, and that is really nice. But it looks like we got a USB-A port here, and then another USB-A port, and a single USB-C port. So kind of interesting that we're still using more uh, A ports than C ports as far as the USB goes, but not a big deal. And then, of course, a car charger or car um, input port. Now, looking at these these uh, buttons on the front, feel really premium, and they they are they feel like they're weather resistant as well because they are rubberized, and they are slightly raised, and they have a nice tactile feel. So DC and AC buttons. Yeah, you don't have to go hunting for those. Sometimes you know companies will spread them around, and you kind of have to go figure out what's where. Uh, now, the nice thing about that is you can easily tell which button is for what, but um, I, I kind of like that they're right here and clearly marked and they light up when you press them. So there's no question that they are active. Yeah, very impressed with that. On this side, and again, I'll put a close up here for you so you can see, but we've got the uh, charger connector for the standard uh, computer style cable. There's your uh, DC7909 port for uh, charging via the car charger or via, via solar. And then down here on the bottom, there's actually a little grounding connector. So that's pretty nice that they include that. Now on the other side, there are a couple of battery expansion ports. And that's very nice for a battery in this capacity class to have multiple expansion options. So I'm gonna have to delve into that a little bit more and see what Blue Eddy has added to that. But wow, yeah, Blue Eddy has really upped the, the build quality a couple of notches over the, uh, say the EB line, for example. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to testing this thing out and finding out how it actually performs. So I'm gonna go do that over the course of several weeks and then I will report back here in about uh, two seconds. All right, we are back into the present. So let's get to the important information that you probably would like to know. So first of all, price. And unfortunately, I don't yet have any pricing specifics, but Blue Eddy should be announcing the pricing, at least for the early bird pricing, any day now. So be sure to check that link below on their website for the latest information on that. Now, like all Blue Eddy products, the AC60 does have a two-year warranty, and it kind of weighs in at just about 19 pounds, so it's not unreasonably heavy for its size. Now, in terms of rated battery capacity, this is a 403 watt-hour rated lithium iron phosphate battery. So it does have a much longer life cycle, as you probably know by now, than stuff like lithium NMC, and those are kind of the chemistry that Jackery typically uses. Um, but this one, being lithium iron phosphate, is re rated to retain at least 80% of its original capacity after 3,500 full charge and discharge cycles. So 
That basically means if you use this thing every single day, 100% charged, 100% discharged for 10 years, it's still gonna have 80% of its original capacity. All right, so let's run down some of the notable features about this particular model. So it does support the Blue Eddy app for monitoring and control. Now this thing does have a UPS built in and they claim that it'll switch over in 20 milliseconds or less. So we're gonna test that and you'll see in the clips uh, ahead. And it does support battery expansion. And this is a big one for me. You can put up to two B80 modules and those are 806 watt hours each. And that would give you a maximum of 215 watt hours capacity if you put two of those expansions on there. Also, you'll see that this thing is extremely weather resistant. I noticed right away that the, when I was doing the unboxing, that the rubber buttons and the rubber covers on all of the input output ports really make this thing uh, weather and dirt resistant. And as I said in the unboxing clip, this is arguably one of, if not the best, built portable power station that I've had my hands on. And if you've watched a few of any of my many power station reviews previously, that's not something you've probably heard me say more than maybe one other time. And truthfully, the build quality on this thing is absolutely top shelf. Now the AC inverter in the 60 here is a 600 watt continuous 1200 watt peak AC inverter. And the Blue Eddy app also does have a feature that you can enable called power lifting, which lets you do some interesting things. And we'll take a look at that when we look at the app in just a minute or two. Now in terms of the outputs, I've already mentioned it's got two big AC ports on the front here. And in terms of the DC outputs, it does have that car socket. This is a 12.8 volt regulated port at 10 amps. And uh, we'll actually confirm that in the testing. It does have two USB-A ports that are rated for 15 watts each. That's pretty decent. And it does have one USB-C port that is a PD 60 watt output only. And then of course it does have the wireless charging 15 watt on top of the unit. Now in terms of AC input, this thing does support a maximum charge rate of 600 watts uh, with its integrated AC adapter. And it means you can charge this thing zero to 100% in well under an hour. But as you'll see in a minute, you can also adjust the charge rate inside the Blue Eddy app when that's also pretty cool. I actually like that feature. Now in terms of DC and solar input, there's a DC 7909 connector on the opposite side here that caps out at 200 watts and it supports a open circuit voltage of between 12 volts to 28 volts at eight amps. All right, let's get into the performance and testing results. Now, I always do like to test these power stations for the no load AC inverter drain. And this thing is actually very good in that regard. It only pulls about a half percent per hour when it's not under load. And that's a very low number. So this inverter is definitely not a power hog. And even still, if you wanna kind of protect yourself against accidental drain, you can enable the eco mode within the app. All right, let's jump to some actual testing clips and we'll look at usable capacity via AC and DC. And I'm going to turn the unit on and enable the DC port. And we can see we're registering 13.7 volts. Let me go ahead and dial this up. And we heard the fans come on. So I'll put this right at about 10 amps. Let's check and see how loud the fan is. So around 52 decibels. That's pretty average. It's not an especially annoying sound. It's a pretty good white noise sound. So I would not find that bothersome at all. All right, while we're doing the DC discharge test, let me go ahead and launch the uh, Blue Eddy app here. You can see we're connected to my AC60, uh, outputting 137 watts. And that matches what we see on the output there. I can turn on the AC inverter remotely. And that now shows up there in the display. Go ahead and turn that back off so we don't impact the test. All right, state of charge. You can see we're at 97%. Let's see what else we got in the app. Under the sprocket there in the upper right. I can turn off the eco mode. Uh, so it's got an auto shutdown of four hours. I can change that to uh, anything between one and four hours. So it looks like I can disable it here. I just toggling that switch. It looks like you can even set how much power on AC, the power threshold. So here it's set to 10 watts. Well, it looks like the range is 10 to 30 watts. LED light, you can turn that on and off from here. Power lift mode, that enables me to run higher watt draw loads. And right now it's charging mode is set to turbo. So if I don't need turbo, I can put that on standard It'll charge at a slightly slower rate and stress the batteries a little bit less. But yeah, pretty configurable. Shows me the uh, solar input, the grid input, and the DC and AC outputs. So, 
Not bad. All right, we are at one percent. And notice that the battery meter is uh, still showing 12.8 volts. But we are empty on the AC60. And let's see how we did on capacity here. As you can see, we got 330, call it 35 watt hours. So I'm going to charge this thing back up again and I'm going to rerun this test and see if we get any different numbers. All right, even uh, setting the charge mode on the AC charging to standard, so I'm not fast charging it, I'm charging at about 250 watts. I'm still going to charge this thing in well under two hours. So I think that's a great way to go. I don't think you should generally use fast charge unless you really need to use fast charge. So I think standard mode is, is quite fine, uh, being able to get this thing from zero to 100% in about uh, two hours. And as you can see here on the second DC capacity test, we actually got 338 watt hours out of 403, which equates to 84% of usable capacity, which is actually a little on the high side of average. So that's a good thing. All right, let's do an AC discharge test on the AC60 and find out how many usable watt hours we can get through the inverter. And let's give it a go. All right, while we're at it, let's just see how we're doing on the output. So we're getting a full 120 basically out of these AC outlets. So that's outstanding. All right, do over. It was late and uh, I forgot to connect my watt meter. <laughs> so I, um, I fully recharged the AC60 and we are now going to do usable capacity discharge test for real this time on the AC side. This will ramp up to about 260 or so and then settle back down right about 200 watts. And we'll check back when it's done and see how much usable capacity we get out of the AC inverter on this AC60. All right, it has run its course. Let's see how well the AC inverter did. 358 watt hours. All right, let's load test the inverter on this AC60. You can see here it's labeled as, as a 600 watt power station. It should be able to surge up to 1200 watts, but it does also have that Blue Eddy power lifting feature that you can enable in the app that should allow it to handle inductive loads over 600 watts. It'll just control the, uh, the current so that it doesn't exceed the, the overall power uh, constraints of the inverter. All right, so as you can see right here, I've got a uh, cable going in here. This is actually charging another power station that with a configurable charge rate. So I've set that other power station to 600 watts, and we're going to see if we can get that really close to 600 watts and run this continuously for at least 15 minutes. So let me go ahead and turn on the AC inverter. So it looks like we're in that 588 to 591 or so range. That is good enough for me. Let's check back and see if it makes it all the way to uh, 15 minutes. All right, clearly 15 minutes at max is no problem. Let's go ahead and test this thing to see how it reacts to something a little higher. So let me go ahead and plug in a 200 watt. Now I have power lift turned off, so we'll see how long it lets us run past 600. All right, so we got about 20 seconds out of it, maybe 15, 20 seconds, and then it cut us off. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and shut off that heater, and uh, we are going to reset the AC. All right, so I have got an oil-filled space heater in here. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the AC inverter. All right, so now I've turned on the oil heater, which is basically a resistive load. And you can see this climbing right now. And it should hold us to right around 600 watts. So it is basically just throttling the voltage or the, the wattage down on the space heater so that it does not exceed the unit's maximum rather than tripping. So just keep in mind that power lift mode is really good for uh, resistive loads like space heaters, not so good for things that are uh, have more complex electronics. All right, let's do a solar input test on this AC60. It's supposed to take up to 200 watts of solar input, but that is capped at uh, eight amps, I believe. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and plug in a 200 watt panel. Now this particular 200 watt panel does have an ISC or uh, current short circuit rating of uh, 12 amps. So this is going to exceed the amp input of 8 amps on the AC60. But let's just see what kind of uh, input we get from this panel on the AC60. And uh, see how much it caps us. And we got pretty good sun. Let's just keep our eye over here. And we're not going to get 200 watts because this, this unit is not going to allow us to get, you know, except the full 12 amps. But already we're getting about 152 watts, which is actually quite good for a 200 watt panel under most circumstances, even if the uh, input isn't being capped. So that's pretty respectable output from this panel, given the difference in the uh, current ratings on the AC60 versus the panel. So the voltage is definitely in line. The current, I'm a little more over current on this panel, but still, we're getting 151 watts in. We're only at 5% charge. I'm gonna leave this panel out and see if we can fully recharge this unit in, uh, in less than one day. So I'm actually starting at about 12.30 in the afternoon. And um, yeah, we'll see. we'll see how it goes. All right, it has been a little over two hours. Let's see how we're doing here. We are at 78%, still pulling in 145 watts. Pretty good. We're going to let this thing top off. All right, it has been five and a half hours. Let's see how we're doing. We are at 100%. So yeah, I don't know how long it's been at 100%, but uh, my guess is probably around the four hour mark. We probably uh, maxed it out. So yeah, 200 watt panel, great pairing with this AC60. Let's do a quick test on that UPS mode of the AC60. You can see here I've got a, this is my sacrificial Windows 7 laptop with the battery removed. So it is entirely dependent on power from here. Uh, and you can see that the input is 32 watts, the output is 32 watts. And we are at 100%. So we're on grid power here on the right hand side and the laptop is being powered through the AC inverter uh, through this uh, port right here. So let's find out what happens if we were to simulate a power outage by removing power from the AC60. It should automatically, because right now as you can see it's directly passing through power from AC to the laptop and it should switch over in a matter of milliseconds so the laptop is not interrupted. So keep your eye on the laptop screen. Right now our input is zero but we're still outputting 32. No blips on the laptop. It did not shut down or reboot, so that's very good. And just to show you uh, that having that battery removed does make it entirely dependent on here. Even if I try to unplug and replug very fast, that thing is gonna probably shut down on me. So let's, let's see what that looks like. So I can't plug it back in fast enough to prevent that from shutting down. That literally takes milliseconds and I don't have that kind of reaction time. So. Yes, UPS mode definitely works on the AC60. All right, some final thoughts. If I had to come up with some potential shortcomings, I'd say that maybe a slightly bigger inverter would have been nice, maybe something in the maybe 1200 watt continuous range, uh, because that would give you enough power to make coffee or run an electric kettle. Those things typically require about 1000 watts. I do understand why they chose an inverter the size that they did at 600 watts, because if you were to run a 1000 or 1200 watt load continuously, with this uh, initial base unit of, of only 400 watt hours of capacity, that wouldn't run very long. Um, but if you added one or two of those B80 expansion batteries, I think that's when a thousand watts or 1200 watt inverter really kind of would start to make sense. But okay, let's move on to some things that I, I think that they really did get right. And expandability is kind of at the top of that list. You don't always need a ton of capacity. So a solution like this sort of modular AC60 design gives you the flexibility to just kind of take with you, you know, what you need. You start with 400 watts in the base unit and you can expand it in 800 watt increments up to 2000 watt hours. Um, and the, the B80 modules actually do have their own DC outputs and they can be charged independently from the AC60, which is a very welcome design. Now it also might seem like the 200 watt solar input is a, a little bit of a potential weakness on this or maybe a shortcoming, but really 200 watts is plenty of input for a 400 watt hour power station. It's certainly enough to fully charge it in just a little over two hours of full sun. And that's actually usually more than sufficient. 
And you might reasonably be concerned then, like what if I add some of the expansion batteries and now I got a 2000 watt hour setup. Uh, but keep in mind that the B80s expansion batteries, they have their own 200 watt solar inputs actually. So basically the solar input effectively scales up appropriately as you add the expansion modules. They just have would have to have their own separate solar panel. And I think that is a pretty decent um, compromise in that kind of a modular, modular solution. And the last thing I'd probably mention is the rugged construction is definitely a standout. This is absolutely one of the best power stations that I've had my hands on to date. And uh, when you put your hands on this thing, the words commercial grade will definitely come to mind. And if you end up buying one of these things and you don't agree with that, I want you to come back and, and tell me with a straight face in the comments uh, if, you, uh, if you don't agree with me, because I'm sure you will. And if you do agree with me, uh, I want you to come back and tell me that too, because this thing really is outstanding in that particular uh, category. So, okay, if there's anything that I missed and you still have some questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get to them and answer them if I can. And if you found this review helpful at all, please consider giving me a thumbs up on this thing. I would really appreciate it if you consider doing that. Um, it does help the algorithm and consider subscribing and, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know the drill by now. Anyway, thanks for joining me for this video. And I do hope to see you in the next one. And until then, have fun out there.